But they, in Tarragona with Jan Peterson. Peterson. Yeah, or Peterson originally. How but. should we pronounce it? Any way you want. I haven't agreed with Okay, really how do you pronounce it? I pronounce it Peterson when I'm in Sweden. Yeah. Peterson. Yeah. Okay, and the, the first name is, is Jan. Yeah, but okay. well, it's actually Jan. Like you're yawning. But yeah. Okay. But uh, <laughs> okay. as I said, <laughs> any way you'd like to pronounce That's it, it's easy fine. Jan, yeah. yeah, what, what do you do? Uh, I'm a translation scholar. Uh, I'm the director of the Institute for Interpreting and Translation Studies at Stockholm University. And I'm also the president of ESIS, the Europe European Association for Studies in Screen Translation. So I research and teach screen translation or audiovisual translation. Okay, but your, your, your center does more than that. We do a lot more than that, yeah. yes. Uh, we do all, all sorts of things to do with, with translation and interpreting. Conference interpreting, uh, sign language interpreting, all forms of literary and and also non-fiction non uh, translation, yeah. machine translation and localization. You're training professionals? Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're training students is what we do, and then they, they hopefully they become tr professionals. Mm -hmm. We used to have uh, further edu education courses as well for, for active interpreters and translations, trans translators, but we don't yeah. do that as much anymore. Is there a reason? Well, the government changed our uh, tasks, basically. So when, when we were supposed to do that, and now we don't have to do it anymore, and since it somebody sort else. of stretched our budget. Somebody else no, did. nobody does it now, which is a bit, a bit of a pity. Yeah, there, There's no further education for translators at the moment, unless they choose to become students again and go into our courses, and then they can do it. Okay, your courses are undergrad or masters? Uh, they are, they are all levels now, uh, mm -hmm. undergraduate, and masters, and we also have a PhD program since four years back, I think. Yeah. Okay, good. Before getting into audiovisual, which is your field, mm -hmm. just go back and tell us what you were doing in, in your mid twenties or so. In my mid twenties, I was uh, working in a, uh, on a uh, traveling carnival. <laughs> putting up uh, carousels and merry-go-rounds and, <laughs> and bumper cars and what have you. Where was that? That was in Sweden. Uh, okay. And we traveled around. It was something that we've done for generations in my family. So that is what, yeah, where I was brought a up. A family of carnival mm -hmm. travelers. Yes. Is not performing though. No, 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 no. no, 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 no it was no. just uh, you know the uh, the rides and things. Okay. So, so we, we didn't perform. No. Where did you go from there? Well, after a while, I realized that that was not. The thing I wanted to do as much as study, so I started studying. So I didn't go directly from high school to university. I, there was some eight or nine years in between. Really? Yeah. So you're very late when you started. Very late, yes. I, I was uh, in my late twenties. Yeah. You had languages already then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well, my father's Danish and my mother was Swedish, so I was bilingual, yeah. and then I became fairly proficient in English because I've been in Britain a lot. And uh, yeah. And okay, I, so you had your English before. Studying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then also German and French, which I picked up along the way. So, um, so you're a true Scandinavian. <laughs> well, we tend to know quite a few languages. Yeah. 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 And now we're learning Spanish, which is really hard because now I'm old, so it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy. We should explain. You're, you're on sabbatical. In I'm Spain, a, uh, yeah. I'm uh, at the Autonoma, the uh, UAB in Barcelona, yep. for a sabbatical term, uh, doing just doing research, yep. and I'm having a whale of a time. Learning Catalan. A bit, <laughs> but I'm just trying. I'm struggling with Spanish. So, <laughs> so when you were studying, you, did you start studying translation or, or just English? I, st or? I studied, started studying English linguistics mm -hmm. and uh, literature, but then I became a subtitler for television after yeah. that. Yeah, and then I studied translation after that. Actually, after after working. So you're working school. full time as a subtitler. Yes, I was. Yeah. Yeah. For a while, uh, and then I started actually learning about translation after I. Done translation. So, oh, okay. So when it, we should explain that in Scandinavian countries, subtitles are used. Yes, all the time. Yeah, yes, systematically. It, uh, it's only for very small children's programming that we use dubbing or voice mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's subtitling all, all the way. Do you think that's why foreign languages are very good? That's what we like to think mm -hmm. in Sweden, anyway. I, I don't know. There seems to be. It's a little bit provocative or something to do studies on this, I think, and it's perhaps hard to prove. But. Uh, I mean, when the European Union have, have done studies on this, they always come up inconclusive. So we don't we don't have scientific facts of really? that uh, as such as as well, as far as I'm aware. But yeah. there are certainly minor studies showing that that uh, learning lexical items, for instance, mm. is vastly improved by subtitling. Mm. Whereas for grammar, not not so much. But uh, I know if you get the words, then the grammar might come along 
after a while or something. So yes, we tend to think that subtitling does help us to be better at English anyway, because we all watch English programming, mm. not so many, uh, not so many other languages. So it's just the exposure to the foreign language yeah. that, that in itself. Yeah. Because well, we tend to think here in Spain, we compare with Portugal. Portugal's mm -hmm. a subtitling country, and Spain's a, mm -hmm. a dubbing country. Are they better at English in Portugal? Or do they? Don't tell anyone. No, there are official results. Spain and France are the lowest in mm -hmm. Europe. Yeah. And uh, Portugal does quite well. Mm. Anyway, it's, it's. Yeah. But presumably. Because they cause and effect. Right? Yeah. Because they look, hey, there's that. Yeah. And that. yeah. Well, uh, my personal view is that subtitling certainly helps uh, yeah. in learning languages. Yeah. Okay, so you you were subtitling before you went to study subtitling, mm -hmm. which means nobody has to study it to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it certainly helps. I wish I had studied, ah. studied it before. Ah. Well, there was in-house training and all that sort of thing, of course, so, so I learned the ins and outs of it. But yeah. I had no translation theory when I started, which was a huge drawback, I think, because that would have put me up up to speed with the experienced translators straight away, whereas I now had to work for a couple of years to gain the experience, uh, really? which I would probably have had much easier to grasp if I had the translation theory already in, in hand, I think. The theory is that good? I think so, yeah. Really? It, well, yeah. It, to me it was, whenever I, when I started reading translation theory, it's it sort of so many aha moments all the time, because yeah. this is what I... Struggled to, to understand now this I've understood intuitively uh -huh. while doing this and now I know how it actually works so, Are you so, talking about theory of subtitling or, or across the board? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Across, across the board, yeah okay. And subtitling too as well, yeah. Well, I'm just very pessimistic about, oh, right. about what we No, I, 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 I certainly think it helps. It, it helped, helped me and we find that our students once they they become a bit grumpy about translation theory sometimes and say, well, we don't need this, we just want to translate. And we say, well, you still have a theory of how to translate in your head, this is just making this explicit. And, and then they say, okay, I'll do it. And then they le uh, leave us and they work as translators for a year or two. And then after two or three years, they come back and say, oh, well, some of them do. Now I'm really appreciating the theory that I got into my head. They don't do it immediately because when they come to the, to the workplace, they talk about... Uh, Equivalents, and they talk about polysystem theory or what have, have you, and the and the managers say we don't know yeah, anything yeah. about we don't do that at all. Just yeah. translate these things, yeah. and but then so they they become really pessimistic about the theory because they th think they have no there's no need for it. But after a few years, then they realize oh, well this really helped me, and now I understand why we need to learn it. So, yeah. well it's not true of everybody, but there's certainly quite a few that comes back and tells us that, which is very gratifying. So so your focus on audio visual was. Because of the professional engagement at the beginning, I think so. Yeah. Are there are other reasons for it. No, but also I, I like the medium a lot because mm -hmm. there's so many semi-arctic channels. There's so much meaning making going on, much more so than than in just written texts. I think so. So it's it's more of a challenge in many ways. Are you involved in dubbing as well, or this? this no, we don't. No, no, we okay. don't do dubbing. Okay. Is there a market of, for, for professionals? There's so much. Uh, non-professional mm. volunteer subtitling mm. going on. Is that eating into the market? It is. It certainly is. It, it, yeah. it affects the uh, the wages that people get. Yeah. And uh, it's also the availability of people who are willing to do it for less money and who are mm. willing to do it without being paid at all. Even into Swedish? Then. Even into yeah. Swedish, yeah. yes. I'm, I'm doing a study now on, on Swedish and subbing, for instance. Yeah. And, you, and it's just, compared to professional ones, they're completely horrible. It's like 14-year-olds who barely understand English who do this. So that I think it's important to do some quality studies of professional subtitling uh, versus unprofessional sub subtitling yeah. to, to really show that there is a need for, profi uh, for yeah. professionals here. Although into Spanish we found some really good subtitling. Yes, I know. And if you read the literature on, on, on fan subs, you find that people tend to... Uh, to be very positive about fans up. And the same is true about Italy and China and so on. And you find fans up that are really high quality and which take into consideration very many different... Yeah, aspects. they're very creative. And very, very yeah. creative and do come up with very, very many new things. Yeah. And, and of course with anime and, uh, and yeah. fans having in the United States and so on. Uh, but I think there are other reasons for why that happens. Because in, in, and I think it's to do with, with dubbing and with accessibility. Because in Spain and Italy, you have dubbing all, all, all mm -hmm. the time. And dubbing, as we know, is fairly domesticating compared to subtitling. So if you wanted more of the original 
then you want to go with subtitling. Nobody's going to do that for you. You have to do it yourself. Um, for China, for instance, you don't get hold of all the films that you may want to watch because of censorship and so on. And then you have to provide your own subtitles, mm -hmm. which was also true of anime in America in the 1980s and 90s, where you had to import them yourself and find mm -hmm. some, something and so on. Whereas, and that meant that there was a subculture of people doing this and doing this for a long time and doing it really well with quality control and editing and people, you know, getting more and more cachet the more they do it and the better they do it and, and become sort of bosses within these networks and so on. So there's very much more prestige built into that than you'll find for Swedish subtitling, I think. Okay. Uh, fan okay. subtitling, that is. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no real need, because you, everything's subtitled anyway. Yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the impetus for, for fan subbing into Swedish is not the same as it is for dubbing countries. So. We also found that it's a social activity, that people mm. enjoy working with each other yeah. on a product that yeah. they enjoy, interact with. Yes. So, so it has you, its virtue. Should, should we be fighting fan subbing then? I don't think that is possible, so I don't no. think we should do it because I don't think we should do impossible yeah. things. And also, I think it's it's a it's a good learning tool. I know of uh, companies in Asia, for instance, who have had fan subbing tournaments where the prize for the ones producing the best fan subs of an episode of what whatever it mm -hmm. was was to actually get employment with that firm. Okay. So okay, you, yeah. you get a good fan sub, you get a job. So I, th yeah. I think that's fair enough. With but, time pressure, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <I know>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now I think it's it's pointless to try and fight it, but I think we need to make people aware of quality when it comes mm -hmm. to this. So do you have any other ideas about what we should be doing research on, or areas that need scholarly work? Yes, I think for, uh, for particularly for screen translation, for audiovisual translation, it's important uh, to do more experimental work because, uh, and we are now, I mean, we're sort of shifting the paradigm towards more experimental work right. with eye tracking and with the right. EEC and all these things, because we think we know by now, I mean, uh, screen translation hasn't been along for that long, for that long since the 80s or 90s. So we have sort of established a lot of theories, but many of them are very good, but few of them are actually proven when it comes to reception, for instance. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we think that it's easier for people to watch this, or they will be annoyed if we do that, and it's easier cognitively to... But we need now. Now it's the time to prove all these things, the things that we assume, the things that we think that we know, which means that we have to do a lot of fairly boring studies just to prove the things that we already know. But then we will know that they're actually not, because some of the studies are coming up mm. with results we didn't expect. For instance, that uh, bad subtitling isn't influencing reviewers on the levels that we thought it would be. Mm. Yeah, they can switch off. And yeah, switch on or. We find people reading for certain characters and then not for the not for other characters. Well, we, we, we find that if, for instance, we put in uh, minor grammar errors, people tend not to notice, notice uh, them. Uh, which which uh, we, I mean, that's, I'm a linguist. I would intentionally. We put, the, yeah. There have been uh, uh, scholars doing this in uh, okay. They put in intentional grammar errors uh, and people don't notice okay. them. Oh, well, that some, some do, but not all people. So, so we need to look more at this before we can actually say that. Okay. We, but I think. So, so this. Makes quality complicated. Yes, it, yeah, it's what is quality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from yeah. The, well, quality is complex. A uh, complex issue. Mm -hmm. for, for within business, for instance, it means keeping deadlines yeah. and that sort of thing, yeah. which is not the same as you know a translation scholar would think of as quality. Well, and deadlines are there. Well, deadlines are there. Yeah, yeah, but 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 I mean, when we analyze uh, translated texts, mm -hmm. we're more quality from our point of view is that. Uh, the style is right, or the mm -hmm. equivalents, or what have you, or, or that the scope has been carried out, or whatever. Whereas, uh, and then we have deadlines on our own to keep for, the, for our publications and so on. But that's mm -hmm. not, deadlines is not normally part of what you look at when you look at sure. it academically. Yeah. And I think that's, in, in some way, that's bad because that has huge influence on the way uh, translations are done. Because I could have done this better, but I don't have the time because the deadline is time. Sure. Or I could do this better. But I'm not being paid enough, so I don't have the time that's, because I need to move on to the next one. the other factor. Yeah. yeah. You're using eye tracking mm -hmm. yeah, successfully? Are you happy with that? Uh, I'm just learning, actually. Yeah. It used to be just products, uh, yeah. <laughs> product based. Yeah. My studies were yeah. all based on texts. And uh, now um, that's what I'm doing here in Barcelona now, is I'm learning how to do okay. eye tracking. So 
this far I'm very excited about it. But has anybody tried neuroimaging and things like that? There has been some studies, I think, but I don't, don't know enough about it, to, speaking confidently about it. Yes. Yes. And, uh, they're doing some interesting th things with, uh, I don't know the word for it now, at the UAB where they measure uh, heartbeats and sweat and things, <laughs> you know, to make, measure people's reactions when they watch different kinds of uh, automation products and things like that. So your heartbeat, your adrenaline, yeah. Wish, yeah, if you get excited. Yeah, yeah. like a polygraph thing. Yeah, yeah. That'd be okay. I, I guess it could be exciting watching it. Yeah, yeah but you, I mean, uh, there, are, there are ways, if you put the, one of those EEG hats on, mm -hmm. you can actually measure when people's, how people react to bad subtyping, for instance. If, yeah. if, if they, can you, though? Is, apparently, you, know, you can, yes. Okay. There has been such studies. We, we, where this, um, I don't know enough about this, mm -hmm. but there is an alpha wave or something that goes up when you become consternated, mm -hmm. when there's something that annoys you. Ah, okay. So if you, if, mm -hmm. if you put in a false subtitle, which is really bad, then you, you can actually see it yeah. in people's brains. Okay, that's good. Cool. Yeah, then the eye tracking does the pupil dilation. Yeah, that's what and also that you can also check if they go back and reread the sentence yeah. over again, and, uh, and how much time they spend in the subtitling area, yeah. and how much they go back to the subtitling area because they don't know it. So there are okay. many different ways of doing that. Okay, and are you looking forward to any kind of breakthrough? Do you think that this the technologies will help us advance rapidly in one area or not another? Well, I don't know. I I hope that it's that the technology is going to get better, is what I hope. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, it's not picking up things that we thought it would be picking up. The and eye it, tracking, you mean? The eye tracking, yeah. Uh, and also some of the other measurements. Mm -hmm. Because we, when we put in errors or confusing things, and people don't notice them, it could be that people don't notice them, or it could be that the machines that we're using to test if they're noticing them aren't good enough yet. To, uh, you to remain a linguist. <laughs> you don't, you <laughs> yeah. don't want to believe. Yeah, yeah. Really but, don't care. That but, but, but the much. thing is, if you put put in, uh, if there are a lot of errors in subtitling, and there are quite a few errors in subtitling because people aren't paying enough and so on, right. uh, the, and people don't notice them when you present them to them, it sort of create. It might still create an overall aversion to subtitling because people may think, as they say. That subtitling is crap and that it's not doing its job properly and they yeah, don't translate right. pro properly and so on. So it subtitling gets a bad rep and it could be from these low level errors that people don't seem to be able to point out but they perhaps react to on a low level. So the level of trust would, would, would yeah. implicitly go down even though they're understanding yes. what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh thank you. Yeah. Okay.